Mr. Baldwin, I have been waiting all year to say this. It's about time. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So we're starting on Earth's history and geologic time today. Yep. And uh, we're going to start out with some talk about some of the laws or rules that we're going to use when we talk about deciphering different outcrops and figuring out how old things are other than just really old like me or really young like you. Perfect. And we're just telling a story of the rock based on a couple simple laws. Yeah. Cool. Easy so enough. Let's take a look at those. <clears throat> so to start off, we got a whole bunch of learning targets. Uh, we got number 7 through 12 for you guys. I would pause here, make sure you guys are familiar with the learning targets so you can go back, check, and see as we go through the slides. Make sure you know what we're talking about as we go. And these are going to be really important that you're keeping track of these <clears throat> because of the way we're doing things in class a little bit differently. So you might be focusing on something different than somebody else in class is focusing on. So you need to know what your learning targets are mm -hmm. and they'll know what theirs are. Perfect. You're yeah. all going to get through to all of them at some point anyway. And yeah, they're going through some sort of crazy way to do it, but all at the same yeah. end point. Yep. Cool. Sounds good. All right. And this is a slide deck that has some fill-in-the-blank parts to it. So... We'll be showing you what those correct answers are and make sure that you're recording those as you go through the slideshow mm -hmm. in your in your packets, yeah, right? Absolutely. So they've got these pages in their packets this mm -hmm. time. Great. <clears throat> so we're gonna start out with a little relative dating. Good. Okay. Now relative dating, it's actually pretty simple. Um, all you're doing is you're putting events in order just on when they happened. We don't care about numbers whatsoever. Right, so I'm older than you are, you're younger than I am. Perfect. Just like in this uh, this picture of the two kids, the bigger kid is older than the younger kid. No idea the age of any of them. Okay. And so we've got a little picture here, a diagram <clears throat> here, that shows an example of relative dating the mm -hmm. sedimentary rock layers. And all we can see is that the one labeled A, which mm -hmm. is down here on the bottom, we know that that one is the old one. Mm -hmm. And then the B layer would be... It's right in the middle. A little bit mm -hmm. younger. And the C layer on top is the youngest mm -hmm. because it's sitting on top. And do we care about how old the rocks are at all? You know, we don't. We okay. only care about whether they're older than or younger than. We don't care about whether they're 10 years old and 12 years old Perfect. at this point. Okay. okay. So to kind of talk about some of those, we have some really basic laws that we talk about. Okay. And the first law is the law of superposition. Okay. Um, and it simply just states that the older rocks are on the bottom, okay. younger rocks are on the top. Okay. It's and as the, easy as that. The important thing to remember here is that's in an undeformed sequence where things haven't been flipped over, which yeah. we see sometimes, but not all the time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you just see a rock towards the bottom. If it hasn't been flipped, you know that one's the oldest, rock on the top, that one's the youngest. So if you're out in a beautiful place like is shown in this picture, the Grand Canyon, you've got a nice sequence of sedimentary rock layers. Mm -hmm. You're looking down at the bottom of the canyon, old ones there, up at the top along the rims, young ones. Perfect. Perfect. Easy enough. Good. Okay. Lore of original horizontality. I think that one says the whole thing. Originally, all the rock layers, if they're sedimentary rock layers, they were deposited horizontally, mm -hmm. flat. Yep. So not tilted, not standing up on end, mm -hmm. not folded, mm -hmm. and not faulted, but just lying flat. Yeah, so if we were to look at this outcrop here, and somebody asked what happened, I would say, well, you know, originally those rocks were probably laid down pretty flat, mm -hmm. horizontal. So something must have happened to tip them up a little bit. Okay, so maybe some plate tectonics, a mountain building event. Something pushed those rocks together to make it so they're not horizontal anymore. Either pushed them together or pulled Pull them apart, apart or yeah. sheared them, right? Any mm -hmm. of those things that we remember from structural geology. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Let's go on. The law of cross-cutting relationships. Mm -hmm. So here we have um, a nice stack of rocks, layers. And you can see the oldest at the bottom, the youngest on the top. So this gold one at the very bottom, the orange rusty color one at the very top. And then cutting across all of them is that arrow-shaped triangle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we know for that arrow-shaped triangle to have cut across, those other layers had to already be stacked up there. Yeah, because we couldn't make that in. Uh, we couldn't make that cross cutting. We couldn't make that without the other layers being there. Right. So a lot of times they say, like when you rip a piece of paper, mm -hmm. the rip is like that cross cutting. The paper had to have been there first, and then the rip. Yep. So what we need to fill in here, when the fault cuts through other rocks, or when magma intrudes another rock, the fault of the intrusion is younger than the rocks they cut across. Perfect. Easy enough. Great. Okay, let's go to the next one. We got the law of inclusion. Okay, so basically, law of inclusions just states that rock fragments that are found in another rock, mm -hmm. the fragments have to be younger. 
Yeah, Sorry, older. Have to be older. Sorry, have to be older, yep, yep, older, yep. older. Okay, so if we looked at the first picture, we've got a conglomerate. Yep. It's got the rounded pebbles in it. So mm -hmm. the pebbles had to have been there first in order to make the rock. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Same thing with our chocolate chip cookie. The chocolate chips were there before the cookie was there. So mm -hmm. they're older than the actual cookie. Mm -hmm. And okay. then the last picture all the way to the right, you can see it's a sandstone. So the sand grains had to have been there before you could have made the sandstone. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Sounds pretty straightforward and simple, right? So we might find the law of inclusions when we apply that with some fossils that are mm -hmm. found in a fossiliferous limestone. Mm -hmm. Anything that's included in another rock okay. is older. Cool. Good. All right, so now we've got some lear more learning targets. Take a pause on these because we're talking about something similar but a little bit different at the same time. So what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about how we take those laws and we apply them to unraveling the history of a sequence of rocks mm -hmm. or an outcrop that we're out looking at. Okay. So we want to be able to understand what happened, why it happened, and mm -hmm. in what order it happened. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so that brings us to something that we have here, and it's called an unconformity. Okay? <clears throat> so an unconformity, it's just a break in the rock record. Okay? Mm -hmm. Before we saw all these nice little perfect stacks, but geology isn't perfect like that all the time. Okay? We end up changing some things around. So sometimes we're depositing rocks, sometimes we're eroding rocks, sometimes we're depositing them again. Mm -hmm. okay? And we're trying to tell the story based on some of the pictures that we see there. Okay. So what we see, <clears throat> we see parts of the rock record that mm -hmm. are missing, mm -hmm. like pages missing from a book. Okay. Okay. And we have to remember as we go through talking about unconformities that when rocks, when sedimentary rocks are being deposited, that most often happens underwater. Mm, okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about sea level rising and sea level falling. Mm -hmm. When sea level is low, the rocks are exposed to the environment and they're being eroded away. Mm -hmm. When sea level is high, they're underwater and rocks are probably being, or sediments probably being deposited that mm -hmm. forms into sedimentary rocks. So we're going to interject some information here about sea level rising and sea level falling as we're talking about erosional and depositional events. Okay, so when we say sea levels rise, it means we're depositing. Mm -hmm. Sea levels falls, sea level fall, yeah. we're eroding. Yes. Cool, easy enough. Good. Okay, so, oh. Okay, so for the first type of unconformity, you guys got a lot of stuff to write for this one, so we'll hopefully give you some time. If you need to pause, pause it. Yep. Okay, so first we're looking at a quick story that we have. So... If we look at rock layers A, B, and C, mm -hmm. I know that A was deposited first, because mm -hmm. it's on the bottom, right. then B, then C. Right. And so that means the sea level must have been higher, because mm -hmm. I'm depositing rocks. Correct. Okay, something changed then. Okay, then I had some deformation. So I mm -hmm. tilted my rocks, because I can see that they're on an angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go back just one second. Oh, sorry, yeah. In the <laughs> first one, when A, B, and C are deposited, we're mm -hmm. going to use the law of original horizontality to mm -hmm. show that they were deposited flat okay. when that sea level was high, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're seeing the deformation. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Good. Okay, so we deposited them, we had them flat, then we tilted them, so we got them angled a little bit. And then we have our sea level drop. Mm -hmm. And we said when sea level drops, erosion takes place. Right. So I start eroding part of my A, B, and C surface. Yeah. Okay. Then my last one, what ends up happening is sea level rises again. Yep. So all the way at the bottom, my sea level rises, and I deposit layers F and G. Yeah. And I know because of superposition, F is going to be older than G. Right. And G's on top, so G's going to be the youngest. But we know F and G are also old. Sorry, younger <laughs> yeah. than A, B, and C, right? <laughs> yep. My goodness. All okay. right. And this creates one of our unconformities, a gap in time where we have dep or, sorry erosion taking place. Because we've got that angular unconformity. I've got sharp angles underneath mm -hmm. and then horizontal intersecting with those angles. Okay. So angular unconformity, that's this one, mm -hmm. is usually the easiest to see because you're seeing the angle in between the layers. Yeah. And the unconformity itself mm -hmm. is the erosional surface that sits below layer F in this case. Mm -hmm. So it's the erosional surface separating F from A, B, and C. That's okay. the actual... Because right? that's a gap in time. We're missing part of the story there. Yep. And we have no idea what happened. Right. We can't figure it out. And it could be millions of years are missing. Oh, cool, yeah. All right, good. Let's take another one. Okay, second type of unconformity we see. It's actually called the disconformity. This one's actually the most common one that we see, mm -hmm. but it's the most difficult one to it tell. It is, yeah. Um, so if we take a look at it, we've got the top layers that we're forming first. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And then originally horizontal, originally horizontal yep. superposition, oldest on bottom, youngest on top. 
And again, those are deposited when sea level is high. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a lot of deposition. Okay. So then sea level is going to drop. Mm -hmm. We don't know how much it drops. What we do know is that an erosional surface formed there mm -hmm. completely eroded away layer four, completely mm -hmm. eroded away layer three, and cut into layer two. Okay. So we have no evidence of layers three and four at this outcrop any longer. Totally wiped out. Now we've got the erosional surface. Mm -hmm. It's going to be our unconformity on top of layer two. Okay. All right. So then if sea level rises again mm -hmm. after some time and new rocks are deposited, We've got layer six and seven deposited on top of one and two. Oh, okay. So now here's our unconformity, okay. the erosional surface, that disconformity. How do we know that two and six aren't conformable? Oh my gosh. What clues are there? So we might have to find other outcrops where we would see like one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. And then at our outcrop, we see one, two, six, seven. Okay. Like, what happened to those other layers? Yeah, and we're going to see a great example of that in lab, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. We might look at fossil data. Mm hmm All right. So there are other things that we can use to clue us in on that. Okay. All right, good. All right, we let's go to our... we a couple more, don't we? Yeah, this All is right. our last type of unconformity. It's a nonconformity. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one, a little bit easier to tell here, okay? <clears throat> so basically what it does is it separates an older metamorphic or igneous rock from a younger sedimentary rock at some point. Okay. okay. So if we take a look at the first one, we've got J and K and then I M. I M is just igneous or metamorphic. Mm -hmm. So J and K had to have been there first for I M to be placed there because it's igneous, it cuts across it. Mm -hmm. So that's our law of cross-cutting relationships. So I know that J is the oldest, then K, then M, I and M came. Okay. Okay. So there's actually an alternate way to think about oh this Oh my one. gosh, let's hear yeah. yours. <laughs> so it's possible yeah. that IM was there first. Oh, okay. That there was a lava flow oh, okay. that was there, and it was being eroded, and then maybe sea level rose and deposited J oh, and K on top, on top of IM. Of okay. So one of the things we're going to start to encourage you guys to look for is we're going to look for something called a baked zone, where if J and K were there, uh -huh and then I am was intruded into it, oh. it would actually bake mm -hmm. layer J. Just like if your hand was there and I put a flame under it, it would burn your hand. Yeah, it wouldn't feel good. If J was there and I am was intruded into it, it would burn that layer and you'd see evidence of gotcha. a zone around I am that okay. was baked. So we'll talk about that more as we're going through the problem set. Okay. But realize with this, you've got one little twist that you need to look for. You need to look for that baked zone. Okay. All right. All right, so we end up having that igneous and metamorphic surface, right. and then we had J and K, whichever one ended up happening first. Yeah. If it's the bake zone, then we know that IM came later. Right. Okay. Then we had sea levels fall, and they eroded away J and K, mm -hmm. and then we had deposition here of P and Q. Yeah. Okay, so we've got another gap in time somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's just missing part of the story, and it's just because we've got differences in ages of the rocks. Right. So okay. that nonconformity is, again, that erosional surface. Mm -hmm. All right, good. All right, time for quiz Ooh. time. Okay. All right, sounds good. So jump out, go to your class page, take your quiz, and we'll see you guys in class tomorrow. We'll see you guys. Post good. some comments you guys have or questions down below in the video. Hopefully you guys can figure out some answers by yourselves, too. Sounds good. See you guys. Bye.